What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 to 48 hours, lots of juicy topics to discuss again. Firstly, Barcelona are in the market to sign a replacement for Busquets who will leave the club this summer when his contract expires. The club have narrowed down their list to two players, Ruben Neves and the favorite target Martin Zubimendi. The club really like his profile. Xavi likes him. Mateo Ademan, Cruyff, Laporta. Everyone likes him. He has a decent price of around 60 million euros with that being his release clause. But Real Sociedad are really trying to renew his contract to of course bump up that release clause and try to get more money out of Barcelona. But again, Zubimendi is the main target to replace Busquets this summer. The club are also in the market for a left back that's right we have three left backs right now in the team and we are in the market for another one because jose gaia is on the verge of becoming a free agent he still has not renewed his contract with valencia and mateo aliman is a huge fan of gaia and this could push out jordi alba out of the club and that way alejandro balde gaia and marx alonso will be the three left backs. We also have a story about Alejandro Balde almost joining Ajax back in November with Tagifigo coming the other way. We'll talk about that. And the weirdest rumor over the past 48 hours, in my opinion, is Asensio being rumored to join Barcelona as a free agent from Real Madrid. Apparently, Xavi really likes the player. His wages will be low. He'll be a free agent. But then again, I don't really see how he fits. We'll talk about that. We also have some contract renewal updates on the two signs that we made, like what? Not even a month ago, 25 days ago, Alba Lorin and Alonso, who both in January will negotiate with Barcelona for contract renewals. We have some updates on the captains like Busquets, Alba, and PK. Also, two big interviews from Memphis Depay and Frankie de Jong that were done during the international break. And also an update on the future of Pablo Torre. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 300 likes in this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours. So the first player that we have been linked with is Marcos Asensio. Of course, the winger for Real Madrid. Anyway, I'm, I don't know. Mundo Portivo came out saying that Marcos Asensio's contract expires next summer, of course, 2023. If Madrid do not renew his contract before January, Barcelona plan to take action on his signing. The club are keeping a close eye on Marco Asensio's future. Couple things. One. He's currently a Madrid player. I've never seen us being linked with the current Madrid player in my life until now, or I haven't. I can't remember the last time we have. Second, secondly, this is again just Spanish bias beyond belief in the sense that you know any decent Spanish player we're going to be linked with. Thirdly, tell me where Asensio uh, fits in the team. We got Dembele, Rafinha, and Zuferan. We already have four wingers. You want to maybe bring in Endrick uh, from the Brazilian league, maybe hopefully let's say hypothetically Messi comes back that's already six wingers where does he fit if 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 we need a winger okay this story can make sense maybe it will happen or not but it'll make sense we don't need him I get it you know market opportunity and all that but we literally have no room for him and also he's a Madrid player and I don't want him anywhere near my club now, Asensio has been speaking uh, over international break, and he was asked about these Barcelona rumors. He came out saying that sign for Barcelona. I haven't thought about it. I can't give you an answer right now. You never know. So again, he's smart, just leaving his options open. He will be a free agent next summer. Most likely, he will not renew his contract with Real Madrid. Clubs will be coming in for him. Look, I cannot see this happening. Again, would I do it? No. I hope, I hope it doesn't do it. I hope it doesn't happen, but... It would, be, it would be, you know, kind of funny for Madrid fans to see a player like him go there, you know. Not necessarily a Figo 2.0, but it would be just funny in my opinion. But personally, I would not do it. I don't want him. I don't really think he's that good. I think he's past it. And, you know, he's been very inconsistent. Hasn't played that much over the past few years. Yeah, I get it. He'll be on, you know, if we can get him on low wages, you know, a little bit of a sign-on bonus because he's a free agent. Okay, it'll be a good deal overall. I understand that. But 
it's just a player we do not need but we'll wait and see it is international break rumors are flying all over the place but this one for me just doesn't seem true whatsoever but what is clear is that barcelona have begun their search for a replacement for sergio busquets as we all know the club will look for a new pivot cdm over the next year to sign in the summer to compete hopefully alongside Nico that is the current plan now Luis Rojo from Market came out saying that Barcelona will sign Busquets' replacement next summer as a player will be leaving Barcelona the two main candidates at the moment are Zubimendi of course from Real Sociedad and Ruben Neves from Wolves now out of the two if I could pick I would pick Zubimendi, younger, fits the profile of the team more, he's Spanish, he'll integrate better. Of course, Ruben Neves is kind of, you know, the high profile Portuguese. I also feel like Ruben Neves isn't really the CDM that is identical to Busquets. He's more so of a CDM like a, you know, like a Frankie de Jong, for example, picks the ball up, runs into space, or, you know, he doesn't, he's not a CDM that sprays, you know, the ball, connects the ball from the midfield to the attack in my opinion anyways but it's very clear who barcelona have chosen and that is zubi mendy last night he was on the front cover of mundo portivo and fernando polo came out saying that martin zubi mendy is the pivot who xavi and the sporting area like the most he has a 60 million euro release clause currently and barcelona don't consider him an expensive player his salary will be you know fairly low and with amortization it is very much affordable for the club barcelona already strengthened many positions last summer and they want to sign a pivot next summer with Busquets expected to leave and Zumendi is the favorite. The La Real player will be delighted to join Barcelona but he respects La Real. Xavi likes Zumendi a lot but Barcelona contacted his agent even before Xavi showed interest. Everyone at the club from Xavi to Eliman and Cruyff to the technical area Everyone considers Zuba Mendy as a suitable pivot. Zuba Mendy's current contract at La Real ends in 2025 and he has a 60 million euro release clause. But Real Sociedad want to extend his contract by at least another two years, doubling his current salary and increasing his release clause to 100 million euros. So if Barcelona want this deal, they have to move quickly. Look, I think 60 million euros for Zuba Mendy as, you know, a price. Is a bit on the expensive side. I get it, he'll come in on low wages. I get it, he's, you know, the ideal replacement, but would I pay it? I'm not quite too sure. The question in my head right now is what's more important for the team right now? Fullbacks or a pivot? Because of course, we know that this summer the budget will not be that big. We're thinking, you know, 100 million euros at the most, plus sales on top of that. You want to add sales? Okay. 100 million. What's more important, getting a right back, you know what happens with Bayerin, we're talking about Bayerin near the end of the video, left back, you want to bring someone to compete with Alejandro, Balde, and Alonso, what's the priority here, the priority to DM? fine, go get him, but if it's, you know, fullbacks, you have to prioritize that, of course. Now, Sport of Kamal saying that Martin Zubimendi is the chosen one to replace Busquets as Barcelona see him ready and mature. He knows the Liga well and fits a profile which Barcelona wants. The option of Frankie de Jong as a pivot does not convince the club, and of course, Ruben Neves is another option for Barcelona, but Zubimendi is a favorite. Everyone at the club agrees with his signing, and finally, Ferran Martinez from Deportivo came out saying that Barcelona are monitoring Zubimendi Mendy for years and have very good reports. The club is convinced that he is the ideal Busquets replacement and the perfect profile. And the Barcelona players who played with him in the Olympics last year speak highly of him. Of course, Eric Garcia was speaking for the national team at a press conference. He spoke highly there of Zubi Mendy. So we'll wait and see. Again, for me, it's a question of what is the priority for Barcelona, fullbacks or a pivot? Can we rely on Nico for a year? I think we possibly could, but of course, competition is what we want. Games are coming in thick and fast. Every other day, Nico can play every single week. And of course, Frankie de Jong probably hopefully will be used as an interior. Franck Cassier, I don't really think is a pivot for Barcelona, let's be honest. So, we'll wait and see. I do like Zumendi. I'm very happy with this option. I think out of the two of him and Ruben Neves, I wouldn't mind either, although I would favor a little bit Zubimendi. So, we'll wait and see. But again, it's going to be tough. Real Sociedad are currently in negotiations to renew his contract with the Barcelona rumors, you know, lingering here, hopefully putting some doubts in his head. You know, he was on the front cover of Mundo Deportivo. So, I think he'll be looking at that thinking, damn, the club do want me. So, we'll wait and see. And I also, you know, give you guys a reminder to watch out for him this season, see how he plays. Because again, Barcelona consider him the best and ideal replacement currently on the market for Busquets. Now on the topic of fullbacks, Barcelona have been linked with two fullbacks over the past 48 hours, a right back and a left back. 
Firstly, on the right back, again, hitting back to the last video about Barcelona keeping an eye on the Brazilian market. Joaquin Pereira from Sport, number one source around Brazilian players coming to Barcelona. He's come out saying that Barcelona like Vanderson right back profile a lot, especially his offensive characteristics. They tried to sign him in the summer, but Monaco asked for around 60 million euros. This will be his last season at Monaco. Premier League clubs are also interested. So Vanderson could be the new possible right back that Barcelona go for. Again, we were linked with him in the summer, and apparently Hawking Pereira is saying that Barcelona did make a you know a verbal offer of around 60 million euros, which was rejected by Monaco, and it's pretty much set in stone that this summer he will leave league. Uh, well, maybe not league, uh, but he'll leave Monaco. The question now is where's he going? Look, haven't seen much of him. I've watched some uh, highlights of him when we linked with him last summer. I think he's fairly decent. But I think at that price point, it's a bit too ridiculous. I'd rather spend 60 million euros on Zubamendi than Vanderson, so to speak. Of course, I do want to write back. If you offered me, you know, 60 million for Hakimi or, or Zubamendi, I would go for Hakimi. But I think Barcelona, again, have to set their priorities straight. What do they want? They want a top quality right back or they want Zubamendi in the midfield. I doubt we can afford both. If we can afford both, fantastic. This conversation we're having right now is useless, but... We'll wait and see. I think, again, you have to keep an eye on Vanderson this season as well. He has been linked heavily with Barcelona. So, we'll wait and see. I think other right-back names will be popping up in the next few months, but no doubt Barcelona are keeping an eye on Vanderson. Now, along with the right-back, the club are also keeping an eye on the left-back market as well, despite the fact that the club right now have three first-team left-backs, and the main name that has been popping up is Jose Gaia. Diari ARA have come out saying that Jose Gaia is still Mateo Aleman's preferred left back for Barcelona. Now, here's the best part Gaia still has not renewed his contract with Valencia despite the fact they have been in advanced negotiations for months. And I mean like months before the summer transfer window started. His contract expires this summer. 2023, Gaia will be a free agent. If we can bin Jordi Alba, bring in Gaia, oof, oof, don't even get me started. I think, again, having three left backs is a bit weird, but Xavi loves that Marcus Alonso profile. I handle the ball that's performing very well. And of course, Jordi Alba will talk about him as well. I'll talk about Baldi as well later on in the video, but I think Jose Gaia for free this summer is the definition of a market opportunity. And I think this could push Jordi Alba out the door this summer. They can probably load him out for his last season. Let's say if you're able to enter, bringing Gaia on a free deal to replace him, that would be the definition of a Matteo Aleman masterclass. But we'll see. No doubt Aleman has good connections with Valencia, with more specifically, of course, Jose Gaia. But again, Gaia, the reports still currently are that he is in advanced negotiation with Valencia to renew his contract. But again, his contract does expire this summer, 2023. So if Barcelona do now end up signing him, it will be as a free agent. Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. First up, it is the four captains. We have an update on three of the situations. Roberto's situation right now is pretty quiet, so I think Roberto's situation is more so just very explanatory, self-explanatory. He has a one-year contract. If it expires this summer, he will leave unless Xavi gives the green light to renew him, so we'll wait and see. But anyways, Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that Xavi has set a new rule in the dressing room that no player is above any other player because of seniority. He wants to keep PK. Busquets and Alba on the bench and ARA Sport also came out saying that Barcelona will have to pay around 130 million euros in salaries to PK, Busquets and Jordi Alba this season. Now this could be the main reason why Barcelona should have a transfer budget this upcoming summer and maybe even January will be fairly low because they get a lot of the deferred salaries, players reaching the end of their contracts, loyalty bonuses, it will affect Barcelona in the long term. So let's now discuss some of the individual cases of the three captains, Busquets, Alba, and PK. Firstly on Busi with Alcor being linked with Zumendi and Ruben Neves is becoming more and more clear that Busi will leave the club at the end of the season. When his contract expires, Sport came out saying that Busquets will bid farewell to Barcelona at the end of the season when his contract ends. Barcelona wanted to extend his contract for another year, but he is firm that his time at the club is over and he is expected to join Inter Miami as a free agent. I'm expecting this announcement to come after Christmas. I think around 
February time, we can see that press conference, and then Boots can say, look, I'm going to be leaving the end of the season when my contract expires, let's end off well, let's win some trophies, get me that freaking cap now, farewell. I hope that's the case. I think Busquets definitely deserves it, and I think this will mark really the end of an era. I think this will be not as big as Messi's departure, but I think, you know, Messi's departure is here. I think, you know, this is the low point. I'm thinking Busquets is somewhere around here because his departure, you know, when he leaves, you'll think what a player he was, and I'm getting, you know, emotional just speaking, thinking about it because I love Busquets, man. I think he's just a unique talent, someone who is irreplaceable as well. You talk about Zubimendi and Ruben Neves, but none of them will actually replace him. You know, let's be honest, I think Busquets is just unbelievable. And of course, it is again the captain leaving over the past three summers. Two of them, the captain, the first team captain has left. So it looks like Busquets is going to be leaving the club, not retiring, which of course is the good news. He will go out and play in the MLS, but hopefully he gets a proper send up that he deserves near the end of the season. Next up, PK. Now, in the last video, I talked about quotes coming in from sport about PK in the dressing room saying that, oh, I should be playing more than Chavi saying, oh, since you said that, I'm going to play you less on purpose. All those dressing room leaks coming in from sport. Now, sport have since removed those quotes from their article about PK. The article is still up. Everything else that we talked about is still there. Just those quotes were removed. Now, also over the past 24 hours, El Mundo are having some sort of stroke when they're just leaking everything left, right, and center. If you, yesterday, they leaked stuff about Messi, or not yesterday, the day before, and then last night, they leaked stuff about uh, PK. Look, I wouldn't look into the El Mundo stuff. Barcelona already confirmed they're going to sue them, so I think it's all just a bunch of crap just to make PK look... I think PK is down, so now the media trying to, you know, beat him up when he's down. That's what I think it is. All this crap about Graceman's documentary. I don't think PK was that influential. If we get more confirmation from other, you know, actual reliable sources, then we can talk about it. But again, with PK, it's very, very clear the club want him to leave this summer. Uh, retirement is on the table. It's not confirmed or denied. It is on the table. I think a boost. I think a PK. Sorry, stays on the bench for the entire season. I think he will consider it. So we'll wait and see on that. Now on Jordi Alba. Finally, there are reports, of course, coming out from Sports saying that Xavi wants Jordi Alba to leave Barcelona next summer, and the club's priority is to have Alejandro Balde and Jose Gaya as the left back. So we'll talk about Marcos Alonso later on. But I think. If the Jose Gaia situation with him being a free agent intensifies a lot, I think no doubt the club will get rid of Jordi Alba, whether it's a low move for his final season or just terminate his contract by mutual consent. But again, for Jordi Alba, do I think he deserves a Camp Nou send off? I don't think he's at that. I don't think he's at that level yet. I think he's above, you know, the Rakitic, David Villa, Neymar profile, but I don't think he's quite in the Busquets, PK, Messi, Valdez, Puyol. You know, category Suarez. I don't think he's that level. I think he's in between. I think if he was in the Champions League, I think he deserves to send off and win the Champions League this season, for example. Let's say hypothetically, I think that he'll deserve it. But I think he's still a few trophies away from getting that elite legend status. I call him right now more so of an icon. So, Rakitic was an icon via Neymar, you know, Jordi Alba as well. Then you have PK, Messi, Busquets, legends, Denny Alves, you know. So, Oh, wait and see with Jordi Alba. I think the club, they're kind of, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the club just said, you know, had all three of them, you know, do a farewell together the camp now, but we'll see. I think that's now definitely in discussion for Jordi Alba. Again, like PK, if he's on the bench consistently that the whole entire season, I think he will also reevaluate his future. So let's wait and see, but it looks like the end of the three captains at Barcelona. Now on the topic of left backs quickly, I want to discuss the transfer saga about Nico Tagliafico coming to Barcelona. As we all know, last January, the club wanted to sign him as an emergency left back option. I think they offered 5 million euros or something like that, or a loan with the buy option of 5 million euros. But Ajax kept saying no, they wanted a permanent transfer at that time for 5 million euros, where Barcelona did not have the money. Of course, we signed Adama on loan, all but on a free deal. Clearly, there was no money at that time and apparently Barcelona even offered a swap deal for Alejandro Balde. Luis Rojo from Marca came out saying that Barcelona offered Ajax a swap deal between Alejandro Balde and Tacrifico in January. However, Ajax did reject the proposal. The reason why Ajax rejected Alejandro in the January was because they did not find Balde as an interesting player, so Ajax decided to reject Barcelona's offer. Apparently, Barcelona offered Balde plus 5 million for Tacrifico. Now, I think at the time, I think in this, of course, in the summer, he left for 5 million euros to Lyon. But I think in January, Ajax wanted 10 million. So Barcelona offered apparently Balde plus 5. They said no, alone with a buy obligation. If certain conditions are met for 5 million, they said no. So in the end, 
we walk out as winners. I mean, Baldwin right now, I'm happy with him. Where I say he's clear of tagging defeat go, I think he's on the same level at the moment. I think Ajax did miss the boat on this. Of course, a player who was desperate to leave was going to leave for free in the summer. Or, uh, sorry, had one year left on his contract. You know, risks are going to be played. And I think they made a big, big uh, mistake on rejecting this offer. But in the end, Barcelona walk out as huge winners. Now, with the international break in full flow, a lot of Barcelona players are speaking to the media, doing presses for their national countries. We heard some quotes from Eric Garcia, Pedri, Dembele talking about life in Barcelona, all that sort of stuff. But the two most interesting interviews have come from the Dutch camp, from Memphis Depay and Frankie de Jong, and I will cover both. I feel like they're very, very important about transfer news, saga, all that sort of stuff, and player situations. Dembele talking about him winning the, winning the, winning the Champions League with Barcelona, him becoming a father, how Coman changed him. We already knew that. Garcia talked about how Luis is a great striker. Ferran Torres is, you know, under criticism. Pedri gave like a whole analysis on the team, talking about Oh, Kessie is great, all that sort of stuff. So it's not really relevant in my opinion for a transfer video, but I think Memphis Pie and Frankie de Jong are. So first thing on Memphis, he came out saying, of course, this time I look for extra forward to this week with the national team. I'm sure you can guess why I played less than usual and it's not something I'm used to, but here you know you're going to play, so I'm extra motivated and thankful. I had two starting spots in the last two weeks in La Liga. It's not enough. I got taken off after 60 minutes in both matches, but I'm longing for more in the last 25 minutes of the game. There's more space and I always have more power to prop fit from that. So Depay saying, look, no matter what I do, I'll always get chopped off in the hour mark. I feel like at the end of the game, I could be more uh, impactful. So we'll see on that. He was then asked why he decided to stay at Barcelona. He said that, look, other clubs came in. Then you just look at your options and I decided to fight for my chance here. I was the top goal scorer last year at Barcelona alongside Aubameyang. I love competition. I don't walk away from it and I enjoy being at Barcelona. Now, we all know that's cap <laughs> because of course he was one step away from Juventus. The reason why he stayed and we all know this is because the offers, the other ones were not good enough or did not arrive. Chelsea came in final day, offered him something like ridiculously low and he said no. He agreed with Juventus and in the end they decided to walk away, not Memphis. So I think this is a load of crap just to make him look good. He tweeted on, you know, an hour before the transfer to close it. Oh, I'm saying a Barcelona, Fishka Barca. So I think it's a bit cringy for Memphis trying to make himself look good. Like he likes competition, but in reality, he just couldn't find another move that satisfied him, the club, the club that he's going to, and of course, Barcelona. As a player, you don't always know exactly what's going on within the club. Barcelona is a business like any other club. Numbers are important and the interest is big. What I know is that I was always paid my salary in full. And yes, Frankie de Jong as well. So that's now Kunde, Memphis, and you could say Frankie, all confirming that they get paid their salary in full without any problems from Barcelona. Sit down, Gary Neville, you absolute twat. They talk about him being friends with Frankie de Jong. Look, I think this interview from Depay is enlightening a bit. He says, look, if I get to play more minutes, I could be more impactful. I think, you know what? Him then the left against Elche will give Chavi question marks saying that, look, Ferran's not really effective. Ansu Fati has niggling injuries here and there. I think the pie can get his chance down the left. I think now it more relies on Ansu Fati not being fit. I think Ansu Fati is fit. He'll start. If he starts, I think he'll be impactful. And then that's when the pie goes back on the bench. But let's say, for example, Ansu Fati is not fully fit yet, does not perform on the pitch, he comes in. I think the pie can be impactful. So watch out for him playing in the last 20 minutes of matches where he says that, oh, I can, you know, take advantage of that space. If he does, Ty may think, you know, otherwise. But I think, look, Memphis does have a chance, but. Let's be honest, he's going to leave in the summer for free anyway, so I don't know what the point of, you know, of, you know him talking about all this and analyzing his minutes and stuff like that. So, we'll wait see with Memphis, but again, he does speak a lot about his future at Barcelona and also how he always gets paid his salary in full. Next up, of course, is Frankie de Jong, who was rumored to leave Barcelona every single day of the summer transfer window. And he also spoke alongside Louis van Gaal in a press conference discussing his future. He was asked about staying at Barcelona. He said that, look, I've always wanted to stay from Barcelona and that's why I remain calm in the summer. I can't give you too many details, but the club has its own ideas and I also have my own ideas. So sometimes they both collide. Very, very interesting choice of words there from Frankie. But at the end of the day, things went okay. Less playing time. When I play less, I do notice it. Not really in terms of the technical aspect because you know you still know how to play football, but more so in the physical aspect. And I've already decided in May that I would want to stay at Barcelona and I never changed my decision at any point throughout the transfer window. Not surprised about that. So I was very calm. I feel welcome at Barcelona and nothing has ever changed 
with my teammates. We'll come back to that. I didn't start against Bayern in the Champions League, still the most important game so far. So you want to play more, uh, you know, important games. I feel good. Hopefully, we'll see what happens against Poland, you know, today. But this was a big part for me. He asked, "How do you feel? Do you feel welcome at Barcelona?" And he said, "Between me and my teammates, nothing has changed." So that opens the door for for changes between, of course, his relationship with the Barcelona board and also Xavi. Look, man, I think his situation is very, very unique and also very weird. Him stating that he decided to stay in May and, you know, throughout June, July, August, he did not even cause a thought about leaving Barcelona for me is big. Of course, Barcelona reached with Man United twice in June and July, and he's sitting there saying, I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave. Now I'm thinking that Barcelona negotiated with Man United more so to push him to reduce his salary and the club will still try and do that to this day of course like Memphis confirmed he gets paid his salary in full without any issues currently but of course the club are not happy with the salary and want to change it but again like I've been saying that the whole entire summer it's a contract he gets paid if he sits there so we'll wait and see how it goes but him you know saying him saying this pretty much says to me look my relationship right now with Xavi and Laporta you could say is not that great that's how I see it. So I think that's very interesting. I think with Chavi, of course, I think that the whole entire season that will change. And with the board, we'll have to wait and see. But again, everything everything is spoken to on the pitch. If Frankie performs well, Chavi will be happy. The board will be happy. Everyone will be okay. But if Frankie does not perform or does not play, then the relationship is still a bit ropey. But again, very interesting words from Frankie de Jong about his last few months at Barcelona and also his current situation at the club as well. Let's now discuss some contract renewal update around the first team at Barcelona. Just two updates and you know who it's on. The two players who signed their first team contract with Barcelona like what? 23, 24 days ago on a one year deal. It is Hector Bayonin and Marcus Alonso. Let's discuss both the situations. Now, firstly, on Bayonin, it is very, you know, the complicated at the two. Relivo have come out saying that Barcelona are happy so far with Bellwin's adaption and is expected to discuss a contract renewal in January. Bellwin signed a one-year contract with Barcelona, which of course will expire in 2023. Matteo Marito came out saying that when Bayern signed for Barcelona, they had already discussed the possibility of renewing his contract. They had agreed to discuss a renewal in January. Now with Bayern, it's not confirmed that he'll stay. It's pending, of course, Xavi's needs, the market, of course, and if Bellerin performs to expectations or not. If he performs well, Xavi likes him, he'll get his renewal, but if he does not perform that well, does not play that great, Xavi not too key on him, we will let him go for free. So Bellerin, all depends on him playing. But again, keep in mind, Juan Laporta is very grateful for the players that he signed. He has a great connection with them. He makes them members of the club. He makes them socio. So the relationship is there. And I feel like there is a verbal agreement that if Bellerin plays well, Laporta will give him a new contract. Marcus Alonso's situation is very, very different. Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that talks on extending Marcus Alonso's contract for two more seasons will begin after the World Cup. So not in January, after the World Cup, which of course I think is what, like pretty much January as well. But look, Alonso has the one year option on his contract. And of course, Chabby has been crying and begging for him that the whole entire summer. I think Alonso is guaranteed to stay. I think Alonso will renew his contract for one year. He'll stay next season with maybe an option of another season. But then you ask the question, if we bring in Jose Gaia for free, Alejandro Balde gets promoted. You really need Alonso. I think Alonso, his continuation more so depends on Chavi's use for him. If Chavi can use him as, you know, a winger, a, a, a wing back or whatever it is, maybe just likes him as an option off the bench, the club will keep him. But if not, I think, you know, he probably leave. I think it will more so depend on Chavi's needs than him actually performing on the pitch. I think Bellerin definitely depends on him performing on the pitch, but Lozo more so on Chavi's needs. So these two situations are very, very interesting. Keep an eye on both. Again, both contract expire in 2023 in January, theoretically. Well, not theoretically. In January, Alonso and Bellerin can speak to any other club outside of Spain and sign a pre-contract agreement. Most likely, though, will not happen. So we'll wait and see. I think at the moment, you can definitely put your bet on Alonso getting a new contract for one year. But with Bellerin, of course, it is at the moment a 50-50. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Firstly, a big one in my opinion, the future of Pablo 
Torre. Rack 1 have come out saying the intention with Pablo Torre is for him to start playing with Barcelona Athletic, the B team, after the international break. Xavi will talk to him and combine first team dynamics with matches with Barcelona Athletic to get regular playing time. This for me is the perfect solution. Look, Pablo Torre. I think he's a bit cocky, a bit arrogant, saying that, oh, I don't want to play for Barcelona Athletic. There's a third division. I could have gone back to racing or in the second division because I got them promoted. I think his attitude is not that great, but I think this is the right move. Look, you're you're the sixth choice midfielder right now. Pedri goes down. Gary goes down. Busquets, Cetia, Frankie. You're next in line. You're off the bench. But again, you have not played significant minutes. I think you played what? Six minutes against Victoria Pleasant, and that's it. I think having that option of playing a Barcelona Athletic is so, so important. Look at Alejandro Balde for the last uh, year as well. He didn't play with Barcelona, the first team, too much. He went and played with Barcelona B and developed his game, and that's why he is good to this day. Look at other players in the past as well. Pablo Gavin at the beginning under Komen, he wasn't getting in the squad list that much. He was going for Barcelona B, playing for them, and then, of course, came into the first team. I think that's very important to keep match fitness up, to get the rhythm, and also understand the philosophy of Barcelona. So let's say, for example, we play, of course, Real Mallorca after the international break. Look, everyone's fit right now. You're sixth choice. Even with the starting and the subs, you're not getting in. So this week, go play for Barcelona Athletic. Oh, next game, Pedri has a knock. Okay, you're on the bench. You come with us. Travel. Oh, look, 80th, 70th minute. Get on there. Show me what you got. This for me is perfect for Pablo Torre. The question now is really, will he accept this, you know, plan or not we'll wait and see but again the plan is very clear for Pablo Torre to play regularly for Barcelona Athletic while also staying in the first team dynamics also keep in mind he will train with Barcelona first team week in week out no matter what as well so we'll see I think that's the best option for Pablo Torre and again no doubt around January time with the Super Cup Copa del Rey coming back he will get his opportunity in the first team now the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video, discuss the designs for next season's kits. Yes, I still don't have the kits for this season, and we're talking about next season. So, 40 headlines, as we all know, and number one source around kit leaks, they get everything right every single time. They've come out saying that, look, here are the two options right now for Barcelona for their home kit next season. Of course, it's going to be the three stripes, red, blue, and uh, red. Uh, that's going to be very, that's very, very clear at the moment. But there is a question about the design. Look at the top there. On the left-hand side, just blue, plain blue. On the right-hand side, you do have some red strips. For me, I think that second option is way way better the first option gives me vibes of you know 2016 8 no, 2017 18 season the last season of Luz Enrique oh no 2016 17 the last season of Luz Enrique it looks very similar to that it's just a bit darker of course that one was a bit lighter we had of course I think got cut their airways as a sponsor so I don't really like the left one. I think the right hand side one is absolutely perfect. I think it looks really good. And as you can see on the far, far right hand side is the white kit for Barcelona. As we all know, the old crest will be on that. That's confirmed. And here is a design from 40 Headlines. They have the Catalonia strip around the badge with white all over. This for me is okay. I'll buy this. I have no problem. My only concern is if the kit is just plain white. If it's just white with the old crest, I'm not going to be a big fan of it. They got to do something else. Put a strip in there. Do something. So, we'll wait and see. But right now, the works are being done for the design of next kid's season. And of course, while the Porto will have to approve the uh, design, I think, around January. That way, you can give it to Nike. They can manufacture it. Get it all ready for the presentation in March and, April, and probably May or June time. Then release it, of course, in June. So, again, decisions for kids always come in very, very fast. So I say by the end of January, maybe beginning of January, the club will decide on the kid designs for next season. So, that was my reaction to the Barcelona News over the past 24 hours hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed but the main thing i want to refer to of course is on the boost gets replacement who would you go for, Neves or Zubamendi? Secondly, on the left back situation as well, would you go for Guy because he's a free agent? Would you let go of Jordi Alba? Would you renew Marcus Alonso? What would you do in that left back department? Thirdly, on Asensio, would you take him as a free agent or not? Despite the fact he has absolutely no room in the squad whatsoever. And finally, your thoughts on the contract renewal of both Hector Bayonin and Marcus Alonso. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and for the Barca.